Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, I'd like to welcome you um, to our medical webinar. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. So I just wanted to let you know that there is a live Q&A tonight. So we would absolutely love your questions. Um, you can use the Q&A on the Zoom platform. Um, feel free to do that. And it'll actually create a recording of your questions. So if for some reason we're running longer than usual, if there's a lot of questions and we're not able to get to your question, we will um, email you your answer back so um, please ask them and, and do not hesitate so we actually have a wonderful guest on um, absolute wealth of information on with us this evening um, Leslie Stevens she's our guest speaker um, Leslie has actually been involved in the world of pediatric sleep breathing and airway health for over 35 years as CEO and president of Healthy Start she's an international lecturer and trainer and in fact I don't think there's a question in reference to the subject of pediatric sleep breathing airway and help and Healthy Start's connection that she cannot answer and you know really when you have the backing of a company like Healthy Start by Ortho County you have over 41 years, over 4 million cases, and tons of research to back you. Now, most importantly, Leslie is a mother of three, so her goal and desire is to provide every advantage for children to allow them to live healthy and happy lives. This is truly her mission. Um, one of the things that you're going to learn tonight is that there is a silent epidemic affecting nine out of 10 children. Now, this epidemic manifests itself in a variety of symptoms that can be easily overlooked, misdiagnosed and most unfortunately left untreated so it's absolutely critical that children are evaluated for sleep and breathing habits so leslie's mission is to educate both dental professionals and parents to ensure children a lifetime of health happiness and success so i'd like to hand the screen and the mic and the floor over to leslie stevens well thank you so much susie and um welcome everyone i'm so glad um, you are here tonight, and I'm looking forward to just spending a little time with you and um, hopefully sharing some really exciting information um, in regard to sleep breathing and the development of the airway. Um, I'd like to start out, though, and say um, yesterday was a very sad day. Um, probably the godfather of sleep, breathing, and airway, um, Dr. Christian Guimano. Um, unfortunately passed away. Um, he has dedicated probably over 50 years of his life um, in the research, um, the education of this topic. And um, I have been very fortunate to have the opportunity to um, be with him, speak with him, um, have dinners together, and um, it truly is a very sad day. Um, he leaves such a legacy behind. Um, the numerous research that he has done is um, exceptional. So um, as you continue this journey and learning more and more about sleep, breathing, and airway, um, you will be very fortunate to gain so much knowledge from his research. Um, and I just wanted to take that moment. So if you do not know who he is, please, um, by all means, take a moment, Google him, and um, see all the dedication that he has left for all of us, and his legacy will live on forever. So anyways, without any further ado, let's go into and learn a little bit tonight more about pediatric sleep, breathing, and airway. So um, I'm sure you're all aware um, the ADA has implemented policy in order for dentists to be evaluating um, their patients. Um, the AAO also has come out with a white paper that um, if you're interested, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. Um, their protocol is a little bit different than the ADA. So let me kind of delve into the ADA because um, if you are a dental professional, and tonight we have a whole array, we have pediatricians, we have sleep physicians, we have dentists, pediatric dentists, and orthodontists on with us tonight. Um, but for the dental profession, the ADA is requiring each and every dentist to be evaluating for airway health. Um, they also are looking for deficiencies in growth and development. So we'll be talking about this. We will be giving you um, much of the information. So when your patient comes in, um, the takeaway is please, please be evaluating for airway health as well as sleep and breathing issues and um, just be knowledgeable enough. Um, hopefully you'll take the journey with Healthy Start and learn more and more about 
the how. How do we address it? What do we do in these situations? Um, what's the best way to educate a parent? And we'll talk a little bit about this tonight, and hopefully um, you'll continue and learn more and more about this topic because truthfully, um, my personal opinion is this will be one of the biggest things that hits dentistry. I would probably say um, flor fluoridated water um, is another huge area. I would say implants was another huge area, but I actually think sleep, breathing, and airway will even top those two other areas. So we'll talk about it. You see if you agree with me or not, but um, I do want you to understand how dramatic this topic is and how what kind of an impact it can make on your practice. So the reason why I say there are so many um, children out there, there are adults out there that um, basically exhibit issues with sleep, breathing, and airway. And those numbers are astounding. And it will put a new slant on your practice. It will open up to an area that you're probably not even addressing and realizing how many children are affected. So research shows that an estimated nine out of 10 children suffer from one or more of these outward symptoms. And these outward symptoms include mouth breathing, snoring, teeth grinding, swollen adenoids and tonsils, chronic allergies, eczema, asthma, ADD, ADHD, aggressive behavior, depression, irritability, anger, peer problems, few friends, bedwetting, difficulty in school, especially in the subjects of math, science, and spelling, delayed or stunted growth, restless sleep, nightmares, morning headaches, daytime drowsiness, frequently waking up at night, sleep talking and walking. And when you realize that this number of children are affected, this actually represents 40 million children just in the United States alone. And it is truly a silent crisis among America's children. Um, so when we look at these outward symptoms, many parents identify these different um, outward symptoms as isolated conditions. So for instance, the child might have asthma or maybe they've been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. Well, a parent will focus on that one outward symptom and then basically maybe see a specialist um, to address it. And the way we typically address it is possibly drugs, um, psychiatric testing, counseling, therapy, surgery. Um, there's a whole litany that um, parents are probably um, addressing with their children and probably not realizing that maybe these outward symptoms are linked to an underlying cause. And with that, we want to be looking at the root cause. Typically now, with parents looking at them in isolation, they're typically addressing only the symptoms and they're not addressing the root cause. They tend to be short-term Band-Aids. Um, many times the solution involves several drugs with many side effects. And also these solutions or Band-Aids, so to speak, can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and many times ineffective. So what is the root cause of these outward symptoms? Well, research over the past 20 years has linked each of these outward symptoms to root causes. And these root causes include mouth breathing, a narrow palate, improper tongue placement, and jaw relationships. So how do we screen? What would be the easiest way? How do we get started? Where do we begin? So I always say, first of all, you have a visual agenda that you can evaluate a child. So even if a child's in your office and they're coming into the operatory, you can evaluate so many different areas of deficiency. So for instance, look at the child on the left. Um, I, I think initially we all look at those circles under her eyes. Um, we also should look at how the head is positioned. It's positioned in a forward direction, typically indicating the child is trying to reposition their head in order to gain more oxygen or increase that airway. If you look at the little boy on the right, again, look at the dark circles under their eyes, but also look at how the mouth is positioned. You'll see that the lips are separated, um, and we would tend to estimate that this child is probably a mouth breather. You'll also know, notice how the chin and the neck kind of appear to be almost a double chin. 
the child looks rather heavy when in actuality he is not heavy. It's just the lack of growth and development in that lower third of the face. We also can look at the profiles, which really give us an indication of deficiency of growth. So if we take a straight line from the forehead all the way down, we can see where that deficiency lies. Look at the deficiency of that lower jaw. The mandible is far from in the forward direction as it should be. Look how the lips are separated. There's a rolled lip, meaning that lip is interfering with the way that the upper teeth and the lower teeth are joined, meaning that it is retrusive to the lower mandible. If you look at the child on the right, again, look at how that forehead, and look at if we draw a line down that forehead, where that deficiency lies. And you can see there's much deficiency in the lower third. Again, same situation where there's a rolled tongue. But look at how the chin blends into the neck, almost like a funnel look. So these are all excellent ways to just start assessing what that child is, or what you visually can see as clues before we go into the next step, which would be using the initial screening tool of a sleep questionnaire. And the Healthy Start Sleep Questionnaire is exceptional because not only is it going to indicate the different outward symptoms that occur, but it's also going to ask the parent to evaluate the degree of severity from zero to five, five being the most pronounced. So the initial left-hand column is exactly that. It's the initial um, stage prior to treatment. Um, in a month to two months, we'll have a parent do a follow-up where they'll again score where these conditions lie. Um, these are 27 of the most prevalent um, outward symptoms that you will see, but also look at what number 27 is, and that refers to speech problems. Um, we've been learning and um, evaluating more and more about the speech end of it, and I'll tell you, it's quite exciting, and I've learned things I never knew. Um, when, I, when we look at the speech problems, um, there are certain um, situations, certain type of um, mispronunciations that occur within a child, and a lot of it stems from where the tongue is positioned. Um, many consonants require the positioning of the tongue to be in the palate in order to make those sounds. Some of the sounds require lip seal. And as you could see, just from those few cases that we had um, for initial evaluation, you could probably see why, how that could be so difficult for them. Um, another um, great asset that the initial screening tool or the speech and sleep questionnaire provides you is kind of a mechanism to start that conversation with the parent. Um, many times a parent will read through this list and say, please explain to me what bedwetting, grinding teeth, allergies, and asthma all have in common. It seems kind of like a, a variety or such a wide span of outward symptoms, but it starts that conversation. And this is an important element that you as a provider, as a practitioner, are able to educate the public. That, I think, is maybe 80% of your job, is to educate. You're always educating your patient on what um, the current condition is of their dental health. But this kind of steps it up into the realm of preventive dentistry, but more providing proper health. Um, it goes beyond just the oral cavity into the health of the child. And we'll talk a little bit about what this is. But um, using this form as initiation or the start of a conversation with the parent, as well as assessing the child in a much greater degree um, that will help you in, obviously, the treatment and the success of the treatment. If a parent says, I don't even know what mouth breathing is, or I don't know if my child mouth breathes. Another adjunct to this initial screening tool is tell a parent, um, go into that room where your child sleeps, take a videotape, just five minutes. Watch that videotape and you'll be shocked at what your child does at night. Sometimes parents will just go in the room and we say, if you can hear your child breathe, meaning they have audible breathing, that would be an indication they're a mouth breather. And I will make two comments about mouth breathing. Mouth breathing is probably, you'll see as we go through and we'll show you some research, is the number one 
um, habitual problem that we see. And we're going to tell you the reasons why it's so detrimental to the health of the child. But a child who mouth breathes does not necessarily snore. So sometimes people talk about snoring. Well, we're going to miss out on a whole gamut of kids that have mouth breathing issues because, again, not all mouth breathers snore. However, if they snore, you can guarantee, be guaranteed that they are a mouth breather. So we want to make that distinction really clear so that we're really doing an accurate assessment of the kids. So here is a research study that actually looked at these outward symptoms and used the Healthy Start Sleep questionnaire in the assessment and to see basically what over 500 children were expressing um, within these sleep questionnaires. And the results of this research indicated that mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with more sleep disorder breathing symptoms than any other symptom studied. Nine out of 10 children had one or more outward symptoms of sleep disorder breathing. 60% of the sample had four or more outward symptoms. One out of five children experience bedwetting at a later age. And I just want to take a moment out. Um, unfortunately, um, many families, parents, children, nobody talks about this. Obviously, it's embarrassing. Um, kids that experience bedwetting, it is out of their control. And, you know, many of them, I'll talk to them and they'll say, I'm not allowed to drink anything after four o'clock. And um, parents have tried a whole variety of things to help them eliminate the bedwetting. But what's very interesting is how many kids are affected. So say you have a classroom of 20, you can anticipate four of those ch children to still be bedwetters. But when we basically provide the proper way to breathe, that being nasally as opposed to mouth breathing, we see bedwetting basically eliminated in a high percentage of these kids. So I want to just kind of bring that to light because that was kind of a shocker um, to myself when we went through this study. Um, the last one is really, really critical, and that is between the ages of 4 and 12, 92.6% of these outward symptoms do not self-correct, and 30% worsen with age. It's a really important statistic to provide to parents because what that means is if a parent decides not to proceed in addressing these outward symptoms, they have less than an 8% chance that their child will self-correct. I think any parent would appreciate knowing exactly what kind of numbers they're playing with so that they can make the best decision for their child with the most accurate amount of information. So I, I bring that, we'll talk about it again, but I, I just really want to make sure that that statistic stays fresh in your mind. So here is um, the percentages of the most um, prevalent outward symptoms that we see. And as you can see, mouth breathing is 40, represents 43% of this study. Now, again, why is mouth breathing so bad? Well, just by opening our mouth by a half an inch, when we sleep, we basically eliminate six millimeters of the airway. And if we looked at a seven-year-old, well, guess what? A seven-year-old has a seven millimeter airway. So that means that just by mouth breathing, we've eliminated six millimeters, leaving that child with one millimeter of airway to breathe through during the night. Is that enough? Absolutely not. So let me bring up another question. What requires oxygen? that would be REM sleep. So these children are not getting enough oxygen, and because they have a reduced amount of oxygen, it is difficult or sometimes impossible for them to um, um, become or are able to go into REM sleep. So obviously with um, the lack of REM sleep, the reparative sleep that we need, we have a whole long list of other symptoms um, that occur. And that has to do with basically how the body operates. The body becomes in balance and it can affect neurological, endocrine, um, immune system, hormonal system um, because that repair to sleep has not been obtained by those patients. What other things do we see associated with mouth breathing? Well, we'll typically see eight other outward symptoms. So these outward symptoms can include snoring, 
53.4%. Um, difficulty listening often interrupts, talks while sleeping, allergic symptoms, fidgets with their hands, restless sleep, teeth grinding, feels sleepy or irritable during the day. Um, so the implications are these findings show that sleep disorder breathing is much more common and affects children even as young as two years of age. Begin treatment as early as possible to ensure permanent changes. Identify outward symptoms displayed and 90% of the children that enter your practice can significantly reduce this epidemic and enable you to successfully treat the overall health of your patients. So let's talk a little bit about airway and addressing the habitual air issues and why this is so critical. Um, as we had talked about, mouth breathing basically reduces the airway. Um, we find that if a child is reducing their airway, say to a millimeter, it's similar to what it is to breathe through a coffee stirrer. I don't know if you've ever tried it. Um, I actually tested it out myself. I was gonna spend the entire day trying to breathe through a coffee stir so I could experience what these kids are experiencing during night. So um, I think I lasted about 10 minutes, um, maybe 12, but not too much longer than that. And I'll tell you, I had the most massive headache I've ever had. Now I tried to um, take Excedrin, I tried to eat, I could not get rid of that headache. And it wasn't until the night that I went to sleep and woke up in the morning that that headache um, basically subsided. But what me made me think is, can you imagine those kids that each and every night mouth breathe and have that experience of basically breathing through a coffee stirrer and the headache that results, that they can't get rid of it. Um, many of them probably don't even know how to verbalize it because it's been a part of their life. And maybe they think that is just an everyday occurrence and that's how it is to operate on a daily basis and overcome what we consider a barrier for them. Now, what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve a garden hose. Um, as you can see, the little girl on the right that's the type of airway we want to create for these kids so that we are providing them with the oxygen they need to basically get into REM sleep and the reparative sleep that's necessary in order for the body to function properly as nature intended it to do so. So this is what we're gauging at. Um, sometimes parents have kind of a hard time figuring out well, what exactly is six millimeters and what is seven millimeters? It sounds pretty small to me. So um, in the brochures, you'll see this image. And yes, the boy looks rather silly, but the images are really important from the idea of on the right-hand side, look at this dot. This actually represents a seven millimeter diameter airway. And that's what we anticipate for a seven-year-old. What is the age of this little boy? Now, remember, we talked about mouth breathing reducing six millimeters and leaving the child with one millimeter of airway. So take a look at what this is to what this becomes with mouth breathing. Um, to be really honest, that looks like the size of a pen. Um, obviously, it's not enough oxygen, and you can see how difficult it is. So as a parent, it's really good to have those visual cues, so kind of understand what's going on and the impact it's having on their child. Um, typically parents will ask, well, how is this becoming such an epidemic? What is going on that's changing um, the ability of children to develop and the habits that are created? Well, it's associated with pro prolonged use of pacifiers, um, prolonged use of nipple bottles, um, lack of breastfeeding and soft diet. Um, the reason being, well, Let's face it, most parents or most families have two parents that work. It is extremely difficult for a mother to be able to breastfeed for the two years that typically we would anticipate or we would hope for. Um, many parents will say, well, I wasn't able to breastfeed, but I was able to pump and the baby did receive breast milk. And that's great. But again, it's the vehicle that we delivered that milk that becomes a problem. So a nipple bottle, a pacifier, all do the same thing. They depress the tongue, meaning they push the tongue down into the um, mandible or the lower portion of the mouth. So the child doesn't have the ability to put it in the proper space. So wh what is the proper place? 
Well, when we say the letter N, where that sound ends should be where the tongue is positioned. Um, you can try it yourself. Um, I can guarantee you a large percentage of our viewers tonight are thinking, uh-oh, that's not where my tongue is. And what happens is when it lays lay low, it also creates suction in the mouth that actually basically constrict the arches. So many times we see narrow arches, meaning the tongue can't get up into the palate where it belongs, so it lays low. If it lays low, typically they're mouth breathers. So you can kind of see how this vicious circle is created and how it continues through their life. So we want to break that. We want to provide that growth and development that should have occurred if breastfeeding had occurred and create the proper environment or the foundation with the proper habits in order to stabilize and to ensure better health um, for that child. Another outward symptom or outward sign that we can see is the open bite. Um, typically, if you see a child that comes into your office with this kind of look, you can pretty much be assured that it's either a result of pacifier or prolonged nipple bottle use. It could be a tongue thrust, it could be a finger sucking, um, but basically there are habitual issues that are occurring in this patient and obviously would be a great candidate for the Healthy Start treatment. Um, looking at the airway, um, looking at the nasal cavity, we're going to talk about hard and soft palate. We're going to look where the tongue is placed. We're going to look at the airway. So this diagram can help parents a little bit understand where you're talking, where it should, where the tongue should be, um, where the position should be. So I would absolutely encourage using um, that kind of diagram. Um, we talk a lot about mouth breathing. So let's talk about the proper way that we want to breathe, and that is through the nose. And what does the nose do? What are their functions? Well, it serves as an air passageway. It warms and moistens inhaled air. Its membrane traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matter. It contains receptors which sort out odors, and it aids in pronunciation and the quality of voice. Um, how many times do we see a child like this don't worry, the parent had the car stopped. Um, they were watching the child, they moved the seatbelt away. But this is so typical. Um, it is frustrating. Um, how many times on Facebook do you see parents that say, oh my gosh, my child conked out after an hour at the park or after an hour at the zoo? Well, that's not normal. And breathing with their mouth open is not normal either. So we're going to show you an example of Eli that, does that look familiar? Um, yes, open mouth, mouth breathing. And I'm going to show you what and how difficult it is for children to breathe. And then I'm going to show you um, what this parent does and how the Healthy Start system is going to provide that same type of um, treatment or addressing the situation. So take a listen. Now he's holding it. That was holding it. He's still holding it. He's trying to take in air. There he goes. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's, holding it. he's still holding his breath and now he's gonna gulp again. There he goes. That was it again. And it's holding, 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 it's His airway, just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. I 
and now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. This way. Here, at least you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently breathe back forward. So how interesting. Um, look at the changes we can make by basically bringing that lower jaw forward, eliminating mouth breathing, encouraging nasal breathing, um, at the same time being able to open up that airway. So these are the topics we're going to talk about, and this is where we're heading in what we do with the Healthy Start system. Um, another way to kind of explain what has happened, especially to Eli with the mouth breathing is think about that garden hose that we're aiming toward and think what happens when you put a kink in that garden hose. It's another good image to give to parents as well so they can understand that we're providing a large garden hose that doesn't kink and does allow the airway um, to be opened as much as possible to provide enough oxygen for the body to be able to operate properly and get into REM sleep. So airway. Let's talk about what a normal airway and a restricted airway. Um, this is, these are two separate five-year-olds. So the child on the left, you'll see that they have a restricted or compromised airway, and it's more of a skeletal issue. Um, what we find is 21% of the population will have a constricted airway. And please realize these are supplementrics. Um, CBCT scans all have the same issue, and that is the airway or the image is in a vertical position. So unfortunately, this is the best it's going to get for the child. Once they go to sleep or in the horizontal position, the muscles relax and that airway even becomes more compromised. So we want to make sure a parent understands this is best scenario for that child. So obviously the image on the left is a constricted um, airway and the image on the right is a normal airway, which we would hope to see. But now looks what's happened that here is the same five-year-old and the image on the left is a normal airway but look what happens when they mouth breathe just by opening up their mouth. Remember we talked about reducing the airway by six millimeters and you can see the impact that it makes. So a parent, even though they say, isn't it great my child has a normal airway? Well, that doesn't get you out of the ballpark because habitual issues play such an important and unfortunately detrimental effect to um, the ability for that child to breathe normally. Um, Cephalometrics, we don't need them in the Healthy Start system. Obviously, if you have the ability to do that, that's great. Um, again, it's just another tool, another um, area that we can share with parents. This is an image of a CBCT scan, and this is actually a case that was treated with the Healthy Start system. And the image on the left is basically the initial image that was taken, again, a CBCT scan in a vertical position. Typically, the way we look at average airways is we take the age of the child starting at 5, multiply it by 10. So this child happens to be a 9-year-old, which we would anticipate 9 times 10, a 90 square millimeter airway. Obviously, you can see the child is compromised. Um, the airway measured 53.6. Now, we inserted the habit corrector. They wore it at night for one month, and we took a second CBCT scan with the appliance in the mouth to see what kind of increase we would receive in the airway. Now, we actually received 337 square millimeters. Now, that means it increased six times what our initial uh, measurement was of that airway. But let me tell you why this number is so critical. At age 17, the growth and development of our airway peaks, and we would anticipate in that adult to see anywhere from 150 to 170 square millimeters of airway. Bad news is at age 21, our airway starts to deteriorate over the course of a lifetime. So looking at a number of 337, that's double what we would anticipate seeing as the top number or the top development 
in an adult, which would be 17 years of age. So this is a huge breakthrough. This is something that um, could be, uh, could change the trajectory of any person's life. So we are currently um, conducting research in six major um, studies, and we are evaluating exactly this. And we're looking at the longevity, um, what kind of airway improvement we are making in these children, and um, we're very excited with what the preliminary results are looking like. So we'll keep you posted on um, what we're doing and how we're doing it. But it's really kind of important to realize um, what kind of effect the habit corrector has just in even a month's time. Obviously, the habit corrector will continue on for longer, but we kind of wanted just to see where that indication was. Here's a schematic of what we just talked about. Again, you can see the differences and what we anticipate and what we received in this case. So let's kind of do an overview. Um, we are looking at mouth breathing and snoring, and we know this occurs as a result of extended bottle feeding, pacifier use, um, it usually causes poor tongue position and abnormal swallowing. Um, usually sugar processed foods can have an effect and we know that poor oral habits such as thumb, finger, lip sucking, tongue thrust all can occur as well. Um, mouth breathing and snoring will lead to a compromised airway. A compromised airway reduces the airway, it restricts the airflow, it reduces oxygen, increases CO2, it affects brain function, immune and endocrine systems. Um, it creates possibly swollen adenoids and tonsils, low tongue position, tongue thrust, underdeveloped dental arches such as overjet, open bite, even crossbite. And that compromised airway leads to sleep disorder breathing and these outward symptoms, which include restless sleep, um, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, and the list goes on. So what other areas of um, body function is affected by sleep. Well, there was a study that was done um, taking MRIs on individuals with proper sleep, um, normal um, every night sleep, and the results of the MRI, you'll look at the first three images on the top, and you can see the brain activity that occurred in normal um, sleep patterns and the normal brain function. Now, the last three images is brain function with one night of sleep deprivation. It's really hard to even see any type of activity. So um, bad news is all those hours and those nights that you pulled all-nighters probably wasn't the best choice um, looking at this um, research that came out. So um, maybe we can pass that on to our children or other college students that are um, starting a year shortly and um, we can basically um, provide them with our wisdom. So let's talk about the how. How do we address this? What can we do? What does the Healthy Start system do for us? Um, Healthy Start, 52 years, 4 million kids treated worldwide. Um, the system basically includes um, a system of appliances that is basically growing and developing with the child. It's eliminating and providing proper habits. It's guiding and um, expanding and correcting functional problems, um, intercuspating the teeth, and it's doing it typically passively at night while they sleep. If we work on older children, there would probably be an inclusion of two hours of daytime wear and night, but the period of treatment becomes shorter. Um, we want to guide that growth and development. So active treatment usually is about a year and a half to two years. We do put them on basically um, um, a retention type of procedure where they'll continue wearing the appliances, but typically the doctor will see them every six months, typically at their teeth cleaning appointments, and just verify that the child is wearing it, everything is coming in. Our ideal goal is we're going to guide and direct 28 of the incoming teeth. So we we pretty much have a control that everything is going to land properly. Um, our goal is um, uh, class one occlusion. Um, we have 92% success rate in obtaining that um, class one occlusion, ideal occlusion. Um, there are some conditions, especially the older the child gets, 
Um, love to tell you that we could correct anything that comes our way. That's not true. Um, obviously, the older the child becomes, the more crowding that might be in existence. We are not magicians. We would love to be able to create, create space. Um, we can do it with different adjuncts. But part of the process that Healthy Start offers is a diagnostic service. So we're going to take you from A to Z. We're going to guide you through this process. We want to make sure that um, there are other eyes on the case so that we can provide you some of our expertise and um, can assist you when you create that treatment plan for those kids. So it, it's really a very comprehensive system. Um, it's like having a consultant in your office. Um, anything we try that's new, sometimes can present itself as being more challenging. We do not want that to be the case. We want you to have the confidence. We want you to have that ability to reach out, ask questions. Um, we can help um, with your staff to implement this so the system goes seamlessly through your office. So again, Healthy Start, what are we doing? We're addressing the root causes, and we're addressing these by expanding the dental arches, establishing nasal breathing, training the tongue, eliminating bad habits, advancing the mandible to correct overjet, encouraging proper facial and body growth, and correcting most orthodontic problems. So we kind of say frosting on the cake, they're going to have a beautiful smile at the end of treatment, besides being a healthier um, patient for you. Um, let's talk about the habit corrector. Um, the habit corrector is an unbelievable appliance. It has built-in myofunctional therapy. So we basically are able to supply an appliance, have the child sleep with it, and um, through the activation of a swallow, we're going to be able to correct poor habits, create proper habits, start expanding the arches, eliminating mouth breathing, encouraging nasal breathing, um, start working with the advancement of that lower third of the face all at the same time. It's, it's really um, genius, if you want to say. So if you look at the different features of the appliance, you can see there are palatal tabs that's going to start the expansion. Um, we also see prongs that are going to prevent the tongue thrust. Um, we also have a ramp that is built in. So every time the child swallows, the tongue is lifted and placed in the proper position in the upper palate. At the same time, we have these lingual tabs that prevent the lower chin from drifting back. Um, we do offer a pull tab. The pull tab can be used to strengthen the lips. It can also be used to hook onto the night clothes so that if the appliance comes out during the night, it's easy to be found. Um, I will say if a child is a um, habitual mouth breather, and that could be mouth breathing during the day and night, sometimes just at night, it will take them time to be able to um, change the facial muscles and the lip seal in order to hold that appliance in the mouth. Um, we are interested in creating those muscles. We're um, basically encouraging the body to self-correct. Um, sometimes doctors say, oh, I want to make sure it stays in the first night. Um, what can we do? Well, we do have mechanisms to have it stay in at night. But I don't really think we're doing a service to our patients because we're giving them a crutch. I would like to see them themselves be able to hold that appliance in their mouth. So we'll talk a little bit about that. During our courses, we explain some of those um, um, factors, some of those promotions, um, the way we speak to a child so that we can really help them to be successful with the wear of this. Um, we'll evaluate a child's swallow. Um, sometimes maybe you hear what is the proper swallow. Um, so the easiest way to evaluate is have the child take a glass of water. I would not say, oh, you know what? I want to evaluate your swallow. Why don't you take a glass of water? Just make it flow naturally. Say, wow, um, if you want to, please take a glass of water. You probably have had a hard day. And um, when they do that, watch how they swallow. So typically, we want to see only movement in the neck when they're swallowing this water. If we start seeing facial movement, it typically means that they have an improper swallow. So if they take a glass of water and you see this kind of movement in the face, that means they're using other muscles in order to make the swallow because the tongue is not in the right position. So with the habit corrector and the ability to make those changes with that myofunctional therapy built in, again, we said it's activated by a swallow. And at night when we sleep, we swallow one time a minute. 
During the day, we swallow two times a minute. So just by wearing the appliance passively at night when a child sleeps, we're repeating that habit almost 500 times each and every night. So you can imagine how quickly those improper habits are changed and we instill proper habits into the um, child's daily um, routine. We actually did a study of 220 patients and we wanted to kind of predict. So it's helpful for the doctor to know where do we typically or what is the percentage of correction that we typically see with the habit correctors. So these 220 patients wore the appliance for five months and we wanted to see what kind of rate of correction. So for instance, headaches. We found that out of our sample of 220, 40 patients had experienced headaches, that's 18%. Out of that 40 patients, 98% um, of the cases did have improvement. 94% had a mean correction of improvement. Um, the mean correction of the entire sample was 91%, and the percentage of cases with 100% correction was 85%. So you can go through this, and this basically gives you a gauge, so parents know what to expect, um, what is going to be the improvements of these different symptoms. I love the conversation about ADD, ADHD, and the comparison to sleep disorder breathing. So as we all know, ADD and ADHD is a diagnosis that occurs after a list of criteria is met. It is not a blood test, so it's a little bit more difficult to actually identify. Now, what's interesting is the list of criteria that we use to diagnose ADD and ADHD is the same list of criteria we use to diagnose sleep disorder breathing. And um, by looking at sleep disorder breathing, um, we realize what um, the different characteristics, those being outward symptoms and things like that. Now, the current research shows that 85% of the children with ADD and ADHD actually have sleep issues. That's a huge percentage. What is the likelihood that children with ADD and ADHD are misdiagnosed? It's probably quite high. So always the question or always the suggestion is, if you anticipate or suspect a child of having ADD and ADHD behaviors, evaluate sleep first. Go to the root of the cause. We can address that. We can make those changes in that child. Maybe it will be 100% of that ADD or ADHD behavior, or maybe it's a contributing factor. Either way, see where that child ends up, and then address what that behavior looks like at that time. Um, there's been studies on ADD and ADHD. One of the largest ones came from Karen Bonick. Um, she evaluated over 13,000 participants, and she found that sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50%. ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep, but they have delta sleep. Patients without ADD and ADHD have primarily REM sleep and delta sleep. In the study that we did of 500 patients, we found that ADHD was present in 25.2% of the cases. Here are some unfortunate um, statistics that have to do with ADD and sleep di um, disorder breathing. In regard to ADD and ADHD, um, long-term effects is 50% of children with a diagnosis of ADD and ADHD are held back one grade. 30% are held back two grades. Well, if it has to do with sleep, you could really hold back that kid 10 grades. It's not gonna make a difference because you're still going to be experiencing the same behaviors that you experienced even at the current age or grade level. So again, evaluate sleep first. Um, also, what was revealed is children that did have sleep issues, it does affect their IQ. We see a reduction in the IQ by 10 to 20 points. And the study even evaluated what an IQ point is worth during a lifetime of a child, and that is $170,000. So these are not great facts. And unfortunately, they are present, but hopefully um, with the knowledge you're gaining, we will eliminate those 
statistics and create new statistics because of addressing what we hope to be um, the end to an epidemic. So Healthy Start also promotes growth and development. And um, as we see growth and development, looking at normal craniofacial growth, we know that typically around age 12 is where we see the majority of the craniofacial growth having occurred. Um, that's why we tend to say we work with growth and development up to age 12. When we get past age 12, we still can make changes. Actually, our oldest patient is 84, our youngest patient is um, 13 months. So if we look at um, children within that age frame, we can really promote and direct growth and development. If you look at this image here, um, you can see where the directional growth occurs and it is in a forward and down direction. And if we can help implement that and gain the greatest amount of growth that can occur, we can obviously do a huge benefit because it's a lifetime of growth and development that they will be able to enjoy for the rest of their years. Um, here is an example of what I'm talking about in the forward growth and development. You can see the child, um, it's the same girl, she's five years of age. You can see, again, take a visual, look at the profile, look at the deficiency of growth. Um, you can see a year and a half later using only the Healthy Start appliances um, passively at night, you can see um, the amount of forward growth. Um, one of the largest studies that was done on the Healthy Start appliances um, found that with the Healthy Start appliances, it does promote 54% more growth and opens the airway. So you can see the dramatic changes that occurred. There are other appliances that we use to help promote that forward growth as well. Um, one of them is called the Max-A. It's actually a maxillary advancer. That's what it stands for. Um, it does promote that forward growth. If you can see the appliance is missing the frontal wall of the appliance. These tabs here are used for the tongue to push against. So it's actually driving that forward arch forward and the lower part of the position of the appliance is um, promoting or dragging that lower arch again in a forward direction. So here is kind of a, a preliminary, the initial one month in progress and on um, the current state. And as they gain that forward momentum, they will then continue into the habit corrector and then the following appliances to continue that forward growth, but also guide and develop the incoming dentition. Um, class three conditions as well. Um, obviously there's a pseudo and a skeletal. Um, we can obviously easily address the pseudo class three. With the skeletal, we can minimize. Obviously it's difficult to determine um, the amount of skeletal class three that will occur, but if we start earlier, we can minimize what we will see as the class three condition, a skeletal class three condition of that child. Um, the appliance is designed similarly as what we see in um, the Max A, except that again, no frontal wall, the tabs used to push that upper arch in a forward direction. But in the lower arch, we're going to have a lip bumper effect because we're stabilizing the lower so we can make that jump. And that jump occurs really quickly in two to four months period of time. So it is a really quick. And once it makes it, it's almost like we restart that growth because obviously that lower arch is impacting the amount and the ability of that upper arch to fully develop. Once we release that, it seems that the growth continues in a more um, normal fashion. So let's talk about treatment planning. As I said, we will go through the cases with you. So we do a typical records for the patient. Um, we're looking at different conditions that we want to address. And this will determine the protocol, um, the series of appliances that will be utilized within that um, treatment plan for that patient. So let's have some fun. Let's look at some cases and see what we can do for these children. Um, you'll see here is a um, young gentleman, um, age seven. Um, I will say that this child did have a tonsil and adenoid removal two months prior. Um, unfortunately, if you look at the sleep questionnaire, um, 
a still a lot of outward symptoms. I, I think there's 18. That's a pretty severe case. And you'll see a lot of fours, a lot of fives um, for this child. Um, also, if you look down here under the speech, um, you'll say that the child did not speak many words up into the age of three or four. Um, the appliance, the first appliance, the habit corrector was worn for a two month period of time in which a second evaluation by the parent was done on the child. So you can see a lot of improvement, um, um, some ones still, but a lot of zeros as well. So a tremendous change within a two month period of time. So let's look at what the child looked like at the onset. Obviously looking at him doesn't look too bad. I mean, a little circles under his eyes, not too much deficiency in the profile, but let's look at him orthodontically. You can see a severe overbite. Um, you can also see a very square arch. So here he is in March of 2015. Let's see what he looks a year later. Here he is. Notice the change in the face. You can see he has, if you divide it into thirds, he has a very proportional face as he didn't have before. And you can see the change and the improvement of the overjet. Look at the roundness of the arches. And obviously we saw the changes that we um, saw in his sleep questionnaire. Now let's see a year progression and see how stable the case is. You can see how the teeth have settled in. Look at the roundness of the arch. It's really a beautiful case. And look at him, his face is totally changed. So here's another case. You can see the initial. Um, you can see orthodontically deep bite. And I will say orthodontic conditions are truly outward symptoms of sleep. Um, we can relate sleep issues to uh, almost every orthodontic condition that is occurring. Um, you can see the initial. You can see the progress. Um, most importantly, let's take a look at the sleep questionnaire. You can see a lot of three, fours, and fives. Um, Two-month period of time, you can see they mostly are zeros. Here's a one. Um, but you can see the dramatic change. Um, here's a girl at the onset. You can see her condition. Here she is at the finish. Here she is from beginning to end. Here's another. This is um, the initial primary dentition, very deep bite. You can see how the appliance is inserted. You can see the permanent teeth starting to break tissue and coming in. The appliance will capture it guide them into the proper alignment, and then this is the finished image of that patient. Here's another initial and finish. Another initial finish. Here's an interesting um, patient. Um, her mother was 36 when she had um, surgery and um, obviously had not been addressed. She had a lot of sleep issues. Um, she had a lot of um, orthodontic conditions as well. And she saw what she um, remembered herself having in her daughter. So she wanted to start right away. You can obviously see circles under their eyes. You can see that rolled lip deficiency. If you look at the orthodontic, this is a very deep bite. You can see the squareness of the arch. You can see um, some detriment because of bruxing. So here she is here. And let's look as the process of the treatment occurs. Totally different child. Again, face in proportion. You can see the deep overbite has been corrected. Look at the roundness of the arches. So let's see how she progresses and the retention. Here she is older and even older. So let's look at some other cases. This one has a numerous snoring, bruxing, bad breath, air infections. Here he is one year later. Here's another case. Again, you can see um, deep bite. You can see the squareness of the arch. Here they are a year later. Again, you can see two months later the improvement that occurred within the sleep questionnaire. Here's another, had a spectrum of sleep issues, snoring, bruxing. You can see um, deterioration of their teeth. Here they are in mid-treatment. Here's 14 years later and how the case is retained. 
We do have an app that helps us with compliance. We do expect and we receive 94% cooperation with these children. We make it fun, we make it easy. The appliances are soft and comfortable and the app is great for the kids. Um, it will monitor um, the amount of wear that they have, whether the appliance is remained in the mouth. It will also prompt a parent to give you real time changes that we see in um, the um, sleep questionnaire. Um, the child will be rewarded each night. Um, what makes this great is then on Fridays, um, we will supply sleep um, cheek retractors for them. So they will take pictures of um, the child each and every Friday. So it creates a flip book. Now that a parent can have, it can they can share with other parents, family members, but all of this information is also provided within the portal for your view. So before a patient even comes in for their follow-up appointment, you already have a pretty good idea of what's gone on and how it's progressed. So it's a great tool to use. Um, as we said, we've treated over 4 million cases. Um, it's FDA cleared, no latex. All appliances are BPA free, BPS free, phthalate free, no silicone. We actually regulate our appliances to a class two medical device, which we do not need to do. But we want you and we want the parents to understand that we treat every patient like they're our own child. We want to make sure that we are providing the safest um, appliance that's available on the market for um, those patients. And a class two medical device basically means that that appliance is geared to actually be in the body and be um, safe for that patient. Obviously, we're not going to put it in their body, but it gives you the degree of safety that we do provide for these um, patients. So anyways, um, I am going to turn the mic over to Susie. Unless we have questions, I'd love to answer anything that um, anyone has to ask. So Susie. I am here, yes, thank you so much. So I am going to, yes, please ask questions. We're, we're here to answer them. Um, I, I do wanna tell you guys a little bit about um, the digital education platform that we have. Um, I know that you guys have, um, just to have a ton of, of fantastic information. And it's, it's kind of one of those things where once you hear this information, you can't unhear it. And so, um, you know, you can't unknow it, is, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and so now that you look at the kids that are walking across your path and you start noticing these symptoms, you know, the, um, you know, you, you know now, you know that Assessing them is important, but you also know now that there's a treatment that's available. One of the things that we really pride ourselves on is our education platform. So, um, you know, we, we meet with a lot of different, not just um, dental professionals, but also medical professionals. And one of the things that these medical professionals love about what we do is we have a comprehensive education um, platform that we, um, that our doctors have go through to become certified to assess and treat these kids. So um, our digital course is actually um, fantastic because I, I like to call it a three-prong training because it includes not only a digital platform, it includes a hands-on um, training and it includes a live a live training as well. Um, but to tell you a little bit about our digital pl platform, it's actually a seven session digital education series. Now the way that it works is every Monday we email you out a series. Now the series is about an hour and a half long and it goes over each of the different subjects, for example, sleep disordered breathing, you know, oral habits, growth and development, and so on. Um, and so you have a, about, it's about an hour and a half, like I said, and you have the entire week to watch that video series. Now on Friday, we actually have a live interactive study club. So the interactive study club is great because, um, you know, the course is fantastic because it actually includes all of your staff members. I mean, we are really um, on board about the fact that we feel like as though every single one of your staff members needs to um, be excited, needs to understand what you're doing. And so we invite all of them to join you on this educational, on this journey. So, um, but in the study club, we actually bring specialists on. So we have, of course, certified providers that are trainers and lecturers that are actually on to go over the highlights of the course. But we also bring on specialists, for example, to go over billing, to go over implementation, and all kinds of different things to um, just help 
this to be the very best experience that it can be for you. Um, so everything is recorded. Um, if you're not able to make it on the study club, it's no big deal. And um, we record everything and we'll make sure that it's in your inbox to always keep you up to date with what's going on. And we're real hands on. So you can even email your questions. So if you watch the video series and you have some questions, you can email those questions and we'll even ask them live for you if you know that you're not going to be able to make it on. So we want to make it the best experience that we can. Um, you, we also invite you to a provider forum. So it's a digital course provider forum where you can actually meet and network with a ton of different doctors and providers who are experienced, who have questions, you know, you learn from each other, they're uploading their cases, you can upload photos there to, you know, ask questions to our trainers that are monitoring the, the forum. So anyway, it's, it's just a really great way to, to network with each other, and that's all included. Um, so the other cool thing about this is that we actually give you two free cases. So that's the second prong of the training. So the first is the digital. The second is hands-on training. I mean, we want you to actually work with two kids and, and treat these two kids while you're taking the course. So we give you everything you need. We give you all of the appliances that you need you know, to treat these children. We give you um, your diagnostic report. So that takes you step by step from start to finish on how to treat um, treat these children. Um, we give you a, the Healthy Start mobile appliance app um, that Leslie was just talking about. So all of that comes with it, specialty appliance cases, um, just all of these different things. You know, we, we want to make sure that you have everything that you need to treat these two kids. And so that actually comes with the course. We also give you a voucher to attend one of our destination courses. So that's the third prong of the training is our live course, you know, so you can actually come and you can sit in a classroom and you can actually meet, you know, some of our Healthy Start providers and staff. Um, and, you know, it's just different types, three different types of training because we want to make sure that we're giving you every opportunity to get the information that, that you need to be successful. And you can actually bring four staff members to the live course. We also send you a sample acrylic stand. So the acrylic stand is really cool. It comes with sample appliances so that you can put it out on your, um, on your waiting, in your waiting room area. And we want to, you know, we're really big on parent education and we want to give you, of course, what you need to, um, you know, get those questions so that parents come in and they start asking you, you know, what it is that you're doing. So we want to give you everything that you, that we can give you. This is a, this course is awesome because it actually complements the ADA policy on sleep related breathing disorders. You know, the policy states that every um, oral uh, professional should um, be trained on assessing children for sleep and breathing issues because there's so many kids that are being affected. Um, but it's up to you to get the training. And so our course actually meets and complements that policy. Now, on top of that, um, now we have a course coming up really soon, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but as I mentioned, we give you training on um, pediatric treatment of sleep-related breathing disorders and how to identify it in your patients, how to increase your patient flow. So even marketing, you know, we want to help you with your social media marketing. We want to help you with all of those different kinds of things as well. Um, it includes, as I mentioned, um, you and your staff members, and you actually receive 18 CE PACE credits and 16 more when you attend the um, destination course. Now, I want to tell you a little bit. Now, we have doctors that attend um, cor this course from all over the all over all over the world. Um, so, we had a doctor from Australia who attended, and he said that the digital course was excellent. All at Healthy Start have really got their act together and offer resources others strive for, but rarely achieve. Well organized, passionate, and supportive. Doctor from Canada, I want to thank you and your colleagues for this amazing course. I've been searching for a solid system to help my patients, and this is by far the best, most organized, comprehensive course I've taken. Doctor in Colorado, I really enjoyed this course. I've identified, we've identified quite a few patients that will benefit from Healthy Start. My business partner's four-year-old is in the habit corrector because he's had swallowing problems and we've already seen great improvement in his eating. And we already have three more pa um, patients who are ready to start next week. Um, I, I love that testimony because Dr. Wright was actually only three weeks in. So, you know, as I mentioned, it's a seven week course. Um, and it, that in the seven weeks, the seventh week is actually an implementation training for you and your staff members. It's fantastic. But anyway, so she was only three weeks in um, and she already um, had patients knocking on her door. And the reason for that is because we actually send you out your starter appliances so you can get these two kids started immediately. Um, you know, you're, you're taking the course, you can get these kids on the, using the habit corrector. Um, and so parents are already seeing results. They're seeing these symptoms decrease. And when you have a parent 
um, who sees their child feeling better and sleeping better, um, their headaches are gone, they're not bedwetting anymore, you know, just all of those different kinds of things, whatever symptoms are, um, you know, happening, of course, with that child, when they see their child feeling better, um, you know, they, they start talking. So next thing you know, they're telling other parents and, you know, they're knocking on your door wanting to know what you're doing. Um, now, the American Dental Association, we invited them to take this course and they actually um, sent Sorry about that. Fortunately, Susie is traveling to. Um, Hi, I'm so sorry. Are you there, Susie? I'm here. I'm going to share my screen again. I don't know where you lost okay. me. Okay. <laughs> so, I hope you heard everything I said because I was saying really good stuff. <laughs> so, okay. So I want to. I would like to go over the financial metrics, and I'm so sorry if I if I cut out and you missed some of what I was saying. But I mentioned that it's a 3D training or a three prong training, um, and it is. And like I said, I, I, I love that because it gives you all of these different ways to learn. I mean, let's say, as I mentioned, you have your digital, you have your live, and you have your hands-on because we've given you two free cases. Now, typical investment for Healthy Start certification training is our digital course is $3,400. Now, that includes all your staff. So really awesome. And then our, in, or if you wanted to come to an in-person course instead of the digital, um, that would be an additional $400 along with the, um, the $3,400 for um, the digital course. And that includes three staff members. That's still fantastic. But um, we would like to offer um, this promotion for you guys um, to come to our digital course. We're going to give you those two free cases. You can actually come to a live course. It includes all your staff members for the digital. You can come to the to the live course, and it still includes all of your three staff member or your three staff members rather. And we're going to charge you um, the thirty four hundred dollars. So basically, um, we're giving you everything for the cost of the digital. So anyway, pretty pretty awesome. I, yeah, pretty awesome. I I, I always, um, you know, I, I think that that's one of the things that I love love, love about Healthy Start is it's really all about the kids. I mean, we want to ensure, you know, we, we want every child to have the opportunity to have a healthy start. And that starts with you. And so we want to, we want you involved and we, we'd love to see every child out there, um, you know, with the help that they need. So it's so easy to sign up and to get going and to get rolling. Um, all you have to do is visit www.openairwaydentistry.com and click on one of the register now buttons. That will take you to the enrollment form. You just fill it out there and that's it. Um, you, you're set, you're ready to go and we'll actually send you everything you need. Now, we have a course that just started on July the 8th. So, I mean, it just started. And we can get you caught up on that cor course immediately. I mean, I sent, we sent out the first series on Monday. Um, and we have our first study club on Friday. So, I can get you that hour and a half video, get you caught up, and you'll be ready to go for Friday. So, you can start immediately. We also have a course coming up on September the 2nd as well. So, whatever works for you is totally is great with us. Um, you know, the, we always say the sooner the better, but if September 2nd is better for you, that's fine. Um, but you want to take advantage now because we, that way we can send you your, those two appliances immediately. We send you a welcome package. We'll send you your acrylic stand with the sample appliances. We'll get those two um, habit correctors to you. So you'll have everything you need to get going. So um, I just want to thank you guys um, so much for, for being on and, and, um, you know, just learning the information. I mean, that's kind of the first step is getting educated and learning. And now you're ready for the second step, which is to get educated and get certified so you can actually help and treat these kids. So Leslie, is there anything that you'd like to add? Well, um, also the CE credits will be coming to you and Susie will be sending them out. But I did see we had one question. It's kind of a lengthy one, so I'll be quick to it. But I kind of want to explain that Obviously, we um, have treated 4 million children. Um, we feel that we're very successful in what we do. But we always run into maybe some things that are more challenging for different patients. And that is part of the assistance that we offer because we want each and every child to be successful. If a child leaves your office and they're basically your poster board child, and we want that to reflect what kind of practice you are and what kind of treatment you offer. So here it um, basically um, said my two daughters, ages four and seven, have been using the habit corrector for about a month. My seven-year-old has been doing great. We've seen a great improvement in her morning breath um, from no longer mouth breathing at night. However, I feel my four-year-old has had um, has made her snoring worse. 
While wearing the habit corrector at night, her snoring is very loud. She can only keep it in for part of the night. Please advise me more about tonsils and adenoid removal. Her tonsils are very big. Thank you. So let me just briefly explain. Um, children that mouth breathe, we tend to see larger tonsils and adenoids. If you see large tonsils, 90% of the time, you'll also see large adenoids. If we can eliminate the mouth breathing, we see of the tonsils and the adenoids. Now, if a child has a very difficult habit to change, which apparently this child must have, especially since we see the appliance coming out during the night, we might suggest them wearing an hour during the day so the body gets used to it. Make that her success. And then we'll work into the nighttime breathing. Now, again, we talked about how we want the body to make that adaption to hold the appliance in the mouth. So, um, yes, I can do ways to make that appliance stay in so we eliminate the snoring. But I think it's better for us at this point, especially if she's, I think, maybe worn it a month, we would want to keep working on that, I would say up until about two months. But this is a conversation we want you to reach out to us and have. Um, we have implementation specialists that will work with you as well who can answer these questions as well as our home office. That's what we're here for and that's what we want to guide you through this. Because let's face it, this is new. This is something that you're going to introduce to your practice. You want to feel confident. You want to feel that if problems arise or you have questions, you have a resource to reach out to. If that's what we're here for. Please utilize us. Um, that's what makes the system great. So um, uh, hopefully I've answered your question. If not, please reach out. We can give you some other um, kind of tips and tricks um, that will help your daughter. We want your four-year-old four to be as successful as your seven-year-old. So um, absolutely. Um, and again, thank you all for um, taking the time out of your night to join us. Um, I hope you found the information helpful. I always say if I can change the um, life of one child tonight, boy, I've done my job. So hopefully um, with all of you who have been on here today, maybe we've changed a few more than just one child's life tonight. So again, thank you, Susie. Thank you. Um, believe it or not, Susie is on her way or she is at Yellowstone Park. So there was some distortion in sounds, but um, pretty awesome for being that far away. So again, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Um, I hope to see you on the digital and thank you Susie as well for always your time and effort. Absolutely, thank you so much too and thank you everyone for being joining us tonight. Um, yes, we'll, we'll see you either um, on Friday at the study club or on September the 2nd. Have a great night. Take care everyone. Good night. <laughs>